OK, let's look at page 23. Uh, we're going to start by doing some listening practice. So before we listen, let's look at the questions that we should be listening for. Question one, what is the relationship between Betty and Dr. Wu? So we know that there will be at least two people, someone named Betty and someone named Dr. Wu. Question two, what seems to be bothering Betty? Uh, so it looks like uh, Betty is going to Dr. Wu for some kind of advice. Uh, and we have four options here. A, what kind of weather is better for her health? B, what job should she take? C, what school should she go to? D, which relatives should she visit more often? So usually when we see that someone is a doctor, we might uh, expect the conversation to be about health. Um, but remember that doctor is also a title to use for people who have done a PhD. Uh, in English, doctor could also mean 博士. Uh, so A is possible, but if this is in a university, then B and C could also be possible. What job, right, maybe after graduating, or what school? Uh, and this unit is about studying abroad. So it looks like maybe C could be possible. So they, these two are the first simple questions to look for or to listen for. Uh, but then we have a bigger question. Listen and compare. Compare the pros and cons between Chicago and Houston, according to Betty. Uh, so these two places, uh, what are the pros and what are the cons? OK, so let's take a listen.
OK, let's compare answers. Question one, what is the relationship between Betty and Dr. Wu? It sounds like they are student and teacher, right? Betty, and then question two, uh, Betty is asking her teacher, Dr. Wu, about C, what school should she go to? The second part, uh, Betty talked about some good parts and bad parts of Chicago and Houston. So first, she talked about Chicago. She says that uh, her uncle lives nearby and her parents uh, think that it's a good idea to live with or near a family member. So that's one pro for Chicago. Another pro for Chicago is that her uncle can give her a job if she needs money. But the con for Chicago is that maybe the weather will be too cold. Uh, now the pro for Houston, this is a trick question. She didn't mention anything especially good about Houston. She said that Houston is as good as Chicago. And the tuition, Shrefe, is this about the same as Chicago. So there's nothing really good about Houston. But there is a con if she chooses Houston. She says that it might hurt her parents' feelings because they want her to choose Chicago. So now that uh, you know what the answers look like, let's listen again and see if you if you missed the answers the first time. Let's see if you can catch the answers this time. OK, did you catch all the answers? Great, let's look at the next um, set of listening questions. And this, right, uh, dialogue. Question one, where do you think the speakers are? 
in Taiwan, in Chicago, in the Philippines, or on the beach. Uh, notice how you spell Philippines. It's one L and two P's. This is something that many people forget. One L and two P's. Question two, whom does Betty need to visit once a month? Her advisor, her parents, her boyfriend, her uncle. Well, um, if we assume that this is the same Betty as the previous dialogue, then it seems quite likely that it may be her uncle. And if it's her uncle, then she's probably in Chicago. So that's one possible answer. Um, also notice this word, advisor. Uh, in Chinese, it's zidalaosu. But actually, it can also be spelled S-E-R. Um, in fact, S-E-R used to be the most common spelling, but more and more people spell it as S-O-R. Question three, what seems to bother the woman? Ah, so it seems like this dialogue will have another character who doesn't have a name. She has some kind of problem. Uh, a, she has problems with her studies. B, she can't afford a trip to the Philippines. C, her uncle's family is coming to visit her. D, people laugh at her accent or the way that she speaks. Oh yes, uh, by the way, the country, the Philippines also includes the, the. Um, the Philippines originally meant uh, the group of islands that belong to King Philip of Spain. Uh, so these are the Philippine islands, or today we call them the Philippines as a country. And question four, which statement is probably true? A, the man was born in Taiwan. Huh, so maybe we have a third character in this dialogue, someone who's a man. B, the woman can't stand the cold weather. C, the man is the woman's professor. D, the man is a good cook. So of these four, probably one will be true and three will be false. So let's take a listen. OK, so the first question, where are they? Um, again, if these two people are the same as the first dialogue, then um, 
the woman says her uncle lives 45 minutes away. And she also says it's very cold here. So it seems like the best answer is B in Chicago. Whom does Betty need to visit once a month? If she's in Chicago, uh, and she, uh, the woman did say she needs to visit D, her uncle, once a month. What seems to bother the woman? Question three. Uh, it seems like she wants to study fashion, but her parents want her to study business. So the answer should be A, she has problems with her studies. Uh, the other answers, B, uh, the Philippines is where the man is from. C, her uncle is not coming to her. She has to go to her uncle. And D, nobody mentioned her accent. Question four, which one is probably true? A, the man was born in Taiwan. No, he said his family is in the Philippines. B, the woman can't stand the cold weather. Yes, she said it's too cold. It makes her want to go home. So the answer is probably B. C, the man is the woman's professor. Did he sound like her professor? Not really, right? It sounded like they were equals, like they're uh, maybe um, students together. Uh, we don't have evidence suggesting that he is her professor. And D, the man is a good cook. Speaking of food, he said that he li he enjoys home cooking, the cooking that uh, he gets at home. Uh, and this seems to mean that he himself is not a very good cook. Uh, at least he's not as good a cook as his, uh, maybe his mother or his father. So the best answer is B. Now that you know the answers, let's listen again and see if you can catch the evidence for these answers. I don't know why it says this. OK, did you catch all the answers this time? Great, let's take a look at page 24. There's one more dialogue to listen to. These questions uh, have no choices. So uh, be prepared to take notes and see if you can find the answers in the dialogue. Question one, 
who is graduating this summer? So the answer to this question is probably a name. Question two, where do you think Henry is from? So the answer is probably a country or a place. Question three, why are Henry's parents coming to the USA? This answer may be a bit longer. You might have to write a sentence. Question four, what is Betty's plan for the summer? Uh, so again, this answer might be longer. Question five, what is Henry's plan for the future? OK, so it looks like we have two short answer questions and three longer answer questions. Let's take a listen. That's kind of a strange place to end the dialogue. Um, let's see if you caught the answers. One, who is graduating this summer? Henry. Two, where do you think Henry is from? The Philippines. Um, even if you don't remember the other two dialogues, he mentions that he's going home to the Philippines. Three, why are Henry's parents coming to the USA? Uh, in fact, the dialogue mentioned this answer before the answer to question two. And it says that his parents are coming for his commencement. Uh, in US universities, graduation is called commencement. To commence means to go forward to go to the next stage. So commencement is like sending students off into life. Um, and in fact, in US universities, uh, orientation, is called matriculation. Uh, matriculation, the word matriculation comes from the root for mother. And so matriculation is like you're entering into a new family. Uh, so Henry's parents are coming to the USA for his commencement. Boy Ping Hwake can naga imuzumu commencement. Four, what is Betty's plan for the summer? Uh, this answer came last in the dialogue. She said that she is. Well, Henry asked her, are you going home for the summer? And she says, no, 
I'm staying in Chicago and she found a summer job uh, doing interior design, 室内设计, interior design. This answer is probably the, the hardest to catch. It came very quickly. Question five, what is Henry's plan for the future? Um, well, he said that in the long term, he's going to work for the family business. But what is the family business? Um, he says that he wants to work from the ground up. So instead of joining his family business directly, he is looking for jobs with computer companies. So if you take this information and you put it together, it sounds like his family does something with computers. Uh, and as part of the family, if he joins the family business, he would immediately have, um, he would be at a higher level. So in order to get basic experience in this work, he has applied to many different computer companies so that he can start from the bottom. Let's listen one more time and see if you can catch the answers. Did you catch all of the answers this time? OK, great. Um, so that's the end of unit two. Do you have questions about this unit? Great, let's jump directly into unit three. Page 25. So unit two was about studying abroad. Unit three, getting the job of your dreams. It looks like it will be about finding a job. Um, let's do these warm up questions together. What do the words career, promotion, and job satisfaction mean? So the word career is not exactly the same as the word job. Uh, when you say you have a job, people usually think this is something that you're only doing to make money, to live. But a career is like your long-term plan for your job, uh, jobs in the future. So it's usually when people hear that you have a career doing something, uh, they usually think that you want 
to do this kind of job, you think it's meaningful to spend your time like this, and it's not only to make money to live. Uh, and so in Chinese, we call this senya. The second word, promotion, uh, it means to move up in your work. Uh, the opposite of, of promotion. If you do, if you make a big mistake and your boss moves you down a level, the opposite of promotion is demotion. Uh, this does not happen very often. It's usually a big mistake, a demotion. And the third one, job satisfaction. What would make you happy with your work? It's always something to think about. Uh, before you work, like when you choose where you want to work, and while you're working, if you feel uh, unhappy or un unsatisfied, why? How could things change to make you happier with your work? Then we have a few other words. Uh, let's look at these words. Apprentice. Uh, uh, an apprentice is someone who does uh, basic work in order to learn from an expert. Um, I can't remember what this is called in Chinese. Yeah, so you're already doing basic work, right? You're not just sitting in a classroom, but you're still a kind of student uh, learning from an expert. Uh, the next one on the right, day shift. A shift is a time uh, period for work. Uh, in Chinese, we call this pai ban. So a day shift means that you work at this place during the day. Uh, so the opposite of a day shift is a night shift when you're working at this place at night. Um, the uh, another way to say night shift is the graveyard shift. Uh, graveyard is where you bury dead people. Uh, and so like there's a connection between the night and it's sometimes scary and alone and it's like being in a graveyard. Uh, so some people will say they work the graveyard shift. It just means they work the night shift. Uh, and then you also will sometimes see the morning shift. And so that usually begins around dawn or maybe before dawn, uh, and goes all the way to noon. The next word, on duty, which means you are currently working. If you are not currently working, then you are off duty. Um, and these two words are useful if after you get off work, you're still wearing the uniform. Uh, like think about a cop, a police officer. Um, like in, in Taiwan, if you see a police car and the lights are shining, then the police are on duty. But if the lights are not shining, the police are off duty and they won't bother to catch you if you like uh, accidentally go too fast or something. The next word, overtime. I think you can guess what this word means. Over time, too much time. It means that you should be able to stop working, but you're still working. Jaban. Uh, and so usually if you work overtime, your boss has to pay you more money. Uh, and that money is also called overtime. So if you work overtime, your boss has to pay you overtime. The next one, a paycheck. 
this one you should also be able to guess. It's a check for your pay. Uh, uh, of course, uh, in Taiwan, you probably won't get an actual check. Um, but in the US, checks are still quite popular. So if it's not a check, then you would simply get your pay. Uh, two other words for pay as the money you make from work are wage and salary. Wage usually just means uh, money for time working. You work a period of time and your boss gives you some money. A salary usually means that uh, you go to work nine to five every day and every two weeks or every month uh, you will receive your pay. So it's more steady. It's more reliable. That's salary. OK, the second row, the first one, productivity. Productivity comes from the verb produce. To produce something means to make something. So productivity is how much someone does uh, during a certain period of time. Uh, in Chinese, we call this 生产效力. It's usually a number. It's usually like a percentage, like 90%, 110%, something like that. Uh, if you can do a lot during a specific time, it's called high productivity. If you don't do a lot, it's low productivity. The next one, sick leave. I'm sure you all know what this means. It means when you're sick, you ask your boss to let you not work today. To take sick leave. The word leave here is a noun. The, it's actually a short form. The complete form is a leave of absence. A leave of absence. So this is if you're sick. What if you're not sick? What if you're busy and you can't go to work? In English is personal leave. Uh, so you can also say it's 个人家, personal leave. And then the last one, unemployed. The word in the middle, employ, means to hire somebody to work for you. So if you're unemployed, it means you don't have a job. Nobody has asked you to work for them. OK, questions about these words? Let's move on to the second one. Which of the words below is the odd one out? So uh, for each option, there are four words, or four or five words, and one of the words is different from all of the other words. So let's take a look. A, teacher, boxer. A boxer is someone who fights as a sport. Chenjiso. Housewife. Today we don't say housewife. We say a homemaker, um, because not every uh, parent who stays at home is a mother or a woman. So the word homemaker includes men who stay at home. Accountant, someone who does the math for your money. Uh, uh, because they have to take care of the Accounts, zhangben. Housekeeper, 
is someone who takes care of your house or cleans your house for you. So which of these jobs is the most different? It seems like boxer is the most different, right? All of the other ones uh, are jobs that you don't have to move around a lot. Well, housekeeper, you have to move around, but you're taking care of a house. Uh, boxing is a kind of sport. So that's the most different. B, telephone operator. I don't think we have these anymore. A telephone operator is when you make a phone call, a telephone operator will connect you with the person you're calling. I think it's all computers today. Uh, the next one, accountant. The next one, hairstylist. Someone who styles your hair, who gives your hair a kind of fashionable shape. And the last one, lawyer. Someone who takes care of uh, things related to the law. Which of these do you think is the most different? I actually think it's lawyer. Uh, the other three jobs are salary jobs. You go to work every day. At the end of the month, you get your pay. But a lawyer is paid uh, only if they have work. Right? If nobody comes to the lawyer, the lawyer doesn't make money. So I think lawyer is probably the most different. But you could also say hairstylist because a hairstylist is like a creative job. There's no like standard for what is uh, good or bad. But you could also say telephone operator because the telephone operator works with machines. I think for this one, the only thing we can say is that accountant and lawyer are. Well, no, they're not. They're not really that similar. I think they're all pretty different. OK, anyway, that's a good excuse to learn about more words. C. Secretary, someone who takes care of your writing and your uh, letters. Mishu. Doctor, you know this one. Nurse, someone who helps the doctor. Hu shi. And housekeeper, we saw this one. So which one is most different? OK, let's forget about which one is most different. Let's just look at the words because I think they're all kind of different. Um, D, sales clerk. A clerk is someone who works at a company and has to talk with customers. So a sales clerk is someone who tries to sell things to customers in a store. So in Chinese, we might call this The second one, travel agent, uh, is someone who helps you plan a trip. Uh, something like that. Uh, again, like the travel agents are no longer very popular, right? You can plan your own trip. You can buy your own plane tickets. I think that's the one. The third one, fireman. Uh, or today we say firefighter. Uh, someone who fights fires. And the fourth one, a veterinarian. Veterinarian is a doctor for animals. So uh, the word veterinarian is very long and complicated, so people will often just say the vet, V-E-T, the vet. OK, E, the first one is judge, someone who is 
in a court and tells you like who is guilty, who is innocent. Fa Guan. The second one, chef, is the head cook. Chu si ho ju chu. The third one, mayor, is the head of a city. Si zhang. And the fourth one, councilman. Uh, again, today we would say council member. It doesn't have to be a man. Someone who is part of a council. A council is a group of people who make decisions together. There are many different kinds of councils, uh, but because the third word is mayor, so council member probably refers to the city council, si yi hui. So a councilman or a council member is a person who is part of the, in this case, the city council. So it would be si yi ren. And then F, teacher, you know this. Sales clerk, we saw this. Waiter, someone who serves you food and drink at a restaurant. Fu uh, ren, chanting fu ren. Today, more and more people don't say waiter. We say server, someone who serves you the food, who brings you the food. Server. Uh, and then the last one, gas station attendant. So gas station, you know this, right? Where you get gas for your car. Someone who works at a gas station. A gas station attendant is the person who takes the, the pump and puts it in your car uh, and does the work at a gas station. Um, in some places in the US, uh, gas is self-service, which means there is no gas station attendant. You have to pump gas into your own car. OK, do you have questions about these words? Uh, OK, number three, you have two phrases here. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Which means like you can work hard, but you also have to take a break and have fun. And the other one is money makes the world go round. It says around, but usually people just say round. Money makes the world go round. In Chinese, I guess you can say uh, this means your something like that. Money is very important for the world and society. Number four, the word brainstorm. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of this word. It means to come up with ideas without thinking about whether they are good ideas or not. The point is to come up with more ideas. They don't have to be better ideas. And then during the break, you can think about question five. What do the words success and failure mean to you? At the end of your life, when you look back on your life, uh, what kind of life would you call a success? What kind of life would you call a failure? Let's take a short break.
Okay, let's look at page 26. Um, so before we read, we can think about these questions to uh, help you prepare mentally for the reading. Um, it says discuss, you don't have to discuss. I'll read the questions to you and you can think about these questions. When you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Has this changed? Why? Have you ever asked your parents what they wanted to be when they were young? Do you know what your parents actually do at work? How old were you when you got your first job? Do you believe children should work? What should be the minimum working age? So the lowest working age. Are you employed now? Is it temporary? Do you know why your boss hired you instead of other applicants? Are you paid hourly, weekly or monthly? Are there any perks? Uh, a perk is something it's a, like a bonus or an extra a good thing that the job gives you. So not money, other things. Like if you work at a drinks store in Liaotian, a perk might be like free drinks or something. Do you know how much income tax you pay? Income tax, so the sui. Whether it is now or after graduation, would you prefer to work part time or full time? Alone or with others? In Taiwan or abroad? Indoors or outdoors? During the day or in the evenings? With your hands or using your brain? As a boss? or as an employee. What is the difference between hardly working and working hard? Uh, hardly working means you're basically not doing anything. Are you a hard worker? Have you ever been to a job interview? What kinds of questions do you think you would be asked during a job interview? Why? What should you always do to prepare for a job interview? Why? What kinds of questions would you ask during a job interview? Um, so if you've never been to a job interview, usually one of the last questions will be, do you have any questions for us? So even if you're not the boss, if you're just looking for a job, you should also think about what kind of questions would you want to ask during a job interview? What should you avoid doing when you have a job interview? Why are job interviews important for companies? What is the difference between a resume and a cover letter? This word, it looks like resume, but it's from the French. It's resume. Uh, and it, it, the original word actually looks a little different. Let's see if we can find it. Hmm. Hang on. Ah, it looks like this. A resume. So you can tell that it's French. Resume. Uh, and a resume is a list of your work experience. The other thing, a cover letter. When you apply for 
a job or apply for anything, you you shouldn't just send your things over. You have to tell the company or the boss, who are you? Why are you writing? What are you looking for? That kind of letter is called a cover letter because you put it on top of all of your other things, like a cover, Shang Feng Min Yang. So a cover letter. Have you ever written either one of these? Are they important? So these are just some questions for you to think about. Before we do the reading, let's look at the uh, comprehension. We don't have comprehension questions. We don't have comprehension questions. OK, so let's do the reading. Page 27. Uh, so it looks like we're looking at the resume of this person. Yin Ping Lin. Uh, so this is also an example of what information needs to be part of a resume. Your name, obviously. Um, and uh, if you're applying for a job in a Western country, you might consider adding Mr. or Ms in front of your name so that uh, people who are not familiar with Chinese names um, know whether, what your gender is. So uh, you know Mr, but for women you can use Ms instead of Miss. Miss means single woman. But Ms means I don't want to tell you if I'm married. So you don't have to tell your uh, future boss or company whether you are married or not. It's much more fair. Um, and if you are, if your gender is not man or woman or you're between man or women, uh, you can use mix or mex. Uh, for non-binary gender people. Uh, then you should give an address. Um, if you don't want to give your home address, you can like for now you can give like the school's address. If you have some other like public address, it's probably better to give a public address. Uh, if you don't have one, you have to give your home address. Um, and notice that in English, the order of the address is the opposite of in Chinese. In Chinese, we go from big to small, but in English, we go from small to big. First, your home number, then your alley, then your lane. Uh, alley is long and la uh, lane is xiang. Uh, then the section of the road, then the road, then the city. And then the postal code, Yodi Chu Hao, comes last. So the order is the opposite of in Chinese. Uh, and then your email, very important. Uh, some people will also include their phone number here. It could be your cell phone number, or it could be some other kind of public number. But that's your choice. So a resume, you're, look, you're asking for a job. So the objective is what kind of job are you looking for? Um, business recruiters are very busy. A study showed that uh, recruiters spend an average of like seven seconds for each resume. Uh, so it's important to put the uh, most important information first uh, so that the recruiter will definitely see it. So what are you looking to become? In this example, an account executive in an advertising firm. 
uh, we mentioned that firm means company. So an advertising company, 广告公司. An account executive. An executive in this case means someone in charge of something. So an account executive is someone in charge of accounts. Now, uh, for advertising companies, an account is not money. An account is all of the business related to one client. Uh, account. So to become an account executive means to be in charge of dealing with uh, client, uh, different clients. Uh, then the next thing you usually put is your education. Uh, in other words, like what is your highest degree? Uh, what did you study? What are your grades like? You don't have to list all of your grades. Um, and then it's useful to put in some of the uh, significant courses that you've taken. Classes that are related to your job, to the job that you're looking for. Uh, and if you studied another language or you went on exchange to another country, you can also put that here. Then you have work experience. Um, we go from most recent to oldest, so newest to oldest. Uh, so in this case, uh, this person was an advertising department assistant, so they already have experience working in advertising. So you have the company, and then you should tell them, you should tell the company that you're applying to, what did you do in this job? Uh, so that the recruiter knows what exactly, uh, what kind of experience you have. Now, uh, I don't recommend you write it like this. Responsible for assisting. That sounds very weak and vague. Uh, instead, you should start with a verb. Uh, assisted with. Or like did something. And here the word phase means parts. So all phases of means all parts of. Before this, uh, the person had a job as a customer service representative and salesperson. Customer service, 客服, working for McDonald's. Uh, and they took and filled orders. So to take an order means to write it down. To fill an order means to give the customer what they asked for. So like, Basically, what what the this person is saying is they worked at McDonald's, but by pointing out everything that they did, it makes it sound like an important job where they were responsible for many things and learned a lot. Um, and if you ever do work at McDonald's, it's true. You are in, in charge of taking care of what you have to do. And it is a big learning experience. So you can see how writing out exactly what you did can give your future boss a better idea of what it was like to do that job. Even if it's a job that many people don't think is a very good job. And then the first work experience is as a tutor at the Chang family home. So this is jia jiao. You might think, wait, that's not a job. But if you get paid, then yes, it is a job. So you can also put it on your resume. Um, activities. So these are other things that you did that are related to the job you want. 
but you didn't get paid for these. So if you get paid for it, it's experience. If you did not get paid, it's activities. Uh, so this is a students association, public relations, uh, sporting activities, special skills. Personally, I would put special skills uh, up near education because uh, I think bosses care more about your skills than about what you did before. Uh, so here you would put things like the kinds of software, computer software you know how to use, languages, right, like Japanese, or, or if you once did a very special job and you know how to like make something or you know how to do something special, you would put all of these in special skills. Uh, near the end, you would have things like honors and awards. So you've done other things. Did you do them well enough to win awards? Uh, and in this case, this person put down a scholarship, Jiang Shui Jing. And then at the end of your resume, you should put references. Uh, and references are people. People that the company can call or email to ask about your real uh, performance at your job previous work. So usually here we would put like, uh, in this case, this person worked at this company. So their first res reference would be like the boss of this company. Their second reference would be like the store manager of this McDonald's. And then their third reference would be uh, the head of the Chang family. So if a company really is uh, interested in hiring you, they may look at, like if you ask for letters of recommendation, they will look at those, but they may also call your old boss to ask how you actually did in your old job. Uh, and this is like a kind of scary reminder to always try to leave your previous job uh, in a very polite and good way. Try not to like burn down your old job. Uh, so these are like the basic elements of a resume. Uh, especially for someone who just graduated from college. Questions? Okay, so that's the resume. On page 28, we have a cover letter. Uh, today, we usually don't write actual letters, right? We, we write emails, a cover email. Um, but also some people, when they write the application email, they will include a, or they will attach a cover letter. Um, is also something you, you could consider doing. Um, but all of this is, I don't think it's very necessary. This is an older style of writing letters. Um, you can start from like this line dear whomever you're writing to. And it looks like this person is applying to a company called Asian Advertising LTD. LTD means limited. In Chinese, we call this 有限公司. Uh, do you guys remember from high school, uh, we talked about different kinds of companies? Um, so LTD Limited is uh Yoshen is a limited liability company, LLC. Uh, and then uh is corporation or CO for company. These are the three most common kinds of 
uh, companies that you will see. Um, so if you, you should know who you're writing to. Before you write a cover letter, you should find out who you should be writing to. But if you really don't know who you're writing to, like if for some reason, like you make phone calls and you write letters, you don't know the person who's in charge of hiring, then as a last resort, you can write Dear Sir slash Ma'am. Because you don't know if it's a man or a woman. Uh, sometimes you might see uh, somebody start a letter like this. To whom it may concern. This is not really friendly. It's not rude, it's still polite, but it's not friendly. Usually you would start a letter like this if you want to like complain or you want to give information. It doesn't feel good. In Chinese, we call this jing qi zi. To whom it may concern. To concern somebody means it's related to that person or it's something that that person would want to know about. Uh, but you really should find out who you're writing this letter to. Uh, if you're looking for a job, you can also like write dear hiring manager. If again, you can't find the person's name. It, you're usually writing to someone who's in charge of hiring, so it's uh, a hiring manager. I am writing. Ah, so first of all, notice they did not say I'm. They said, I am. Contractions, xie, are usually for speaking. When you write something formal, something important, do not shorten your words. Write them out entirely. So I am writing in response to your recent advertisement in the International Advertising Directory for the position of assistant in international ad advertising. So the first thing you should say in your cover letter, why are you writing this letter? And so this person says, for the position of assistant in international advertising. This is the job that this person wants. The other part of this sentence is, how did you find this job? And this person says, your recent advertisement in the International Advertising Directory. A directory is a list of companies or a list of jobs. Um, we don't have many directories left today. But wherever you found the job posting or the job listing, the information about the job, put it in the first sentence. Um, I suggest you actually flip the order. I think it's a better idea to first say what job you want and then say where you saw this job. So uh, I would say I am writing to apply for the position of assistant in international advertising in response to your recent advertisement in the international advertising directory. The most important information, what job do you want, should come first. And then the next piece of important information that you should put in the first paragraph, please find enclosed a copy of my resume. So you're telling the person, I've also included my work experience. Now the word enclosed means that it is in the same envelope. But if you're sending an email, 
you would say attached. Fu Sang. Okay, so this is the most important information. Why are you writing what else is in the letter? So what else do you have to say in a cover letter? You should introduce yourself. And you should give the person a general idea of why they should look at your application. You know, sending Wenjin. So let's see what this person says. I am currently working in a Taiwan based advertising company. Very good, very important information. It tells the reader they already have experience. As a graduate in applied Chinese, I have a solid foundation in business. Uh, I don't know if this sentence makes sense. 应用中文系毕业,所以我有商业基础. Sounds kind of strange. <laughs> but um, if you really don't have nice things to say about your major, you can try something like this. And maybe the hiring manager will be so busy that they don't think about whether this makes sense. They just read very quickly. Um, but usually you would say, how your major is connected to the job that you want. So uh, if I were this person, I would say as a as an applied Chinese major, I have solid language skills that are most important in business. So that connects the major, which is a language with the job, which is in business. However, I would like to gain more practical, hands-on experience. Uh, again, I would not say something like this. The point of this sentence is to look to the future. Right? The first half of the sentence says what you already have. The next half of the sentence says what you're looking to do. Um, but this sentence is, I would like to gain something. I want something. Uh, it, but I think it would be a better idea to say uh, what you can give the company. Um, I, so this second half, I would say something like, uh, and uh, it would be an honor to contribute my skills to your company. Something like that. Uh, let's look at some words. Practical means uh, it's a skill that you would use a lot. It's something that you gain from experience. Uh, so in Chinese, it's 食物的. And in fact, it means the same thing as hands on experience. Uh, the person is just saying the same thing twice. Next paragraph. Although I do not have a lot of experience. Uh, hmm. I don't know if I would say this. Uh, it's true, but it's not something that I would want to emphasize. On the other hand, if you do say it, then maybe the hiring manager will think that you're very honest. It depends. You can think about this. Becoming an account executive in an advertising firm has been my ambition since junior high school. Good. This tells the hiring manager you're not just looking for a job. This is something that you really want to do. Uh, and if it's something that you really want to do, the hiring manager will think that you will work hard at this job. I believe that I will be an asset to your firm. 
since I have the ability to work independently. The word asset means something that adds value. 资产. But of course here the person is not saying that they will literally be uh, something that makes that adds money to the firm. It's saying that they have the ability to add value and contribute to the firm. I will be an asset to your firm. Uh, and the reason they give is the ability to work independently. Um, again, the idea is good, but I don't think this is the best sentence structure. I would stop the sentence here. I will be an asset to your firm. And then the next sentence was give some reasons why. First reason, I have the ability to work independently. Second reason, I am a conscientious worker. Conscientious. You may notice that it looks like the word conscience, liangxing. To be conscientious means that you're careful and responsible. You care about the result. You're not just doing it because somebody tells you to. You actually care. So first reason, independent. Second reason, conscientious. Third reason, I pay considerable attention to detail. Uh, the word considerable just means a lot. I pay a lot of attention to detail. In addition, I am always concerned about maintaining strong relations with both my colleagues and clients. This sentence is also very important. Uh, when your boss is looking to hire somebody, they want someone who can do the job, but they also want somebody that they can get along with. I'm sure you all know that person who is smart, brilliant, capable, is a great student or worker, but they're just an asshole. You don't want to be around them. Uh, and bosses also know that these people exist. So it's important to point out that you're not an asshole, that you can get along with other people. So maintaining strong relations with colleagues or co-workers and clients, your customers, kehu. So that's all of the important information, right? Why am I writing? What is my relevant experience? And what kind of worker am I that you will want to hire me? Last paragraph. I hope you will consider me for the position of assistant. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. In the meantime, I look forward to hearing from you in the near future. So you already have uh, all of the important information. What is this paragraph doing? First, it's reminding the reader what kind of job they want. Maybe by the time you reach the end of the letter, you may have forgotten. So this person is reminding you. The next sentence shows that you are open and honest. So like if any you have any questions, please uh, contact me. Means I have nothing to hide. You can trust me. And then I look forward to hearing from you. It's kind of like gently persuading that person uh, to make a decision and tell uh, this person. So this paragraph makes you look like a human, like a person, not just a robot, right? The first few paragraphs are all information. Why am I writing you? What have I done? What kind of person am I? But real communication is not just information. It's a building of relationship. So this last paragraph 
is building a relationship with the reader. Right? Uh, remember, this is what I, I'm looking for, and you can trust me. You can ask me anything, uh, and I hope you, you will reply soon. It's a relationship. This last paragraph makes you look human. Uh, and so it's a very important paragraph. It's the difference between reading a textbook and reading a storybook. And then sincerely, uh, name, name. So this is typed. Sorry, line 55 is typed. Has it but line 54 is signed. If you're writing a paper letter, you would sign your name on top of the place where you type your name. Uh, of course, if you're writing an email, you don't have to sign the email. Uh, this part is not part of the letter. These are some places you can look for examples and advice about uh, resumes and cover letters. Again, this textbook was written in 2002, 2003. I'm not quite sure if these websites are still there. Um, but if you need advice about resumes and cover letters, Google is your friend. OK, do you have questions about the cover letter? Uh, Again, you'll notice that most of it is information because the reader is very busy and they probably have to read many letters. Uh, but if they care enough about you to reach the end of your letter, you should let them know that you're also a human being. And that's why you have the last paragraph. OK, um, let's stop early to give you time to move to the other classroom and we'll uh, talk about vocabulary after the break. Last period we talked about resumes and cover letters. If you want to send me your English resume or English cover letter, uh, I can take a look at it for you and give you some suggestions if you want. So if you're interested, uh, just email those to me. Now let's look at page 29, vocabulary. Uh, we'll look at the words we have not yet talked about. Emphasis, I'm sure you know this one. Uh, so it's what you use to tell somebody that this is important. Um, 强调. Aside from emphasis, some other words you can use. Uh, first of all, the verb is emphasize. So in addition to emphasize, some words you can use include Stress, highlight, underline, underscore. Underscore should be one word. Uh, the word objective is what you want, your target or your aim. The move, y'all. Yeah, I think we've seen all of the other words. Um, instead of resume, sometimes you might see someone say CV. A CV is very similar to a resume. CV is Latin, Latin one. It stands for curriculum vitae, and it means the course of your life, the direction that your life is taking. Um, usually CV is used for more academic jobs, 
or in the UK. In the US, they usually look for a resume. Ah, we have not seen this word. Uh, something something based, which means that it is based at this place. So if a job is in Taipei, you would say a Taipei based job. Because the job is based in Taipei. Per means every. So per hour means every hour, per day means every day. This is also from Latin. OK, so here we have eight vocabulary questions. Um, I'll give you four minutes to do these questions, and then let's check your answers. OK, let's see if you got these right. Question one, when you apply for a job, it's important to prepare a resume that outlines your knowledge and experience. Question two, you should write a clearly defined 
objective on your resume so potential employers know what kind of position you want. Uh, the word potential is it means not yet. Qian zai de. Question three. Before your interview, think of things to say to promote yourself to the potential employer. The word promote uh, here means to share information about. In Chinese, we call this tui guang. Question four. What skills and knowledge do you have that could be an asset to the firm? Something that would be good for the company. Question five. You should emphasize as a verb, emphasize your special skills and characteristics during an interview. Question six. I have no idea what the answer is to question six. Um, because it says R, so there should be two things. One thing is telling a potential employer that you will be a conscientious worker. Uh, I guess the other answer could be conscientiousness. Mingzi. So like conscientiousness or being conscientious and telling a potential employer. So you should be conscientious and you should tell them that you will be conscientious. Being conscientious and telling a potential employer. Question seven. If you have a reference in the field, you can find a good job even if you don't have any experience. So even if your resume is completely empty, if you know somebody who will recommend you, if you have a reference, that could also help. Remember here the word reference is talking about a person. Question eight. There are usually many qualified applicants. Uh, so many people who apply who can get the job. But unfortunately, only one will. I would say get get the job, fill the job. We don't have a vocabulary word for this one, I think. Uh, okay, do you have questions about uh, these eight questions? Okay, let's look at page 30. So for each blank, choose one of the words. So let's look at this. Recent graduates have the challenge of finding a rewarding job with a good something. A uh, rewarding job, which means that you think what you get from this job is worth it. A firm, B reward, C solid foundation, D Aspect. You guys remember what aspect means? This is from the last unit. Um, so a firm, a rewarding job with a good firm. Could be. Uh, which means at a good firm. B reward. Doesn't make sense. 
a rewarding job with a good reward. It's repeating itself, so not B. C, a rewarding job with a good solid foundation. Well, no, the foundation is not the job. The foundation is the person, right? The person has a solid foundation and maybe can get the job. So not C. D, a rewarding job with a good aspect. Uh, the meaning and the grammar are OK, but it's too vague, not enough details. What does that mean? A good aspect. Uh, so it's it's if there's no better answer, then D is OK, but we do have a better answer. A. A rewarding job with a good company means a rewarding job at a good company. So the answer is A. Applicants compete with each other for a very small number of positions. So a person begins preparing for the job search before graduation. So what kind of person prepares for the job search before graduation? Let's look at the four choices. A, tolerant. Uh, this word is from the last unit. Uh, being tolerant is a sign that you're a good person, but it's not very related to finding a job. B, well-known. A well-known person. Again, not related to finding a job. C, a conscientious person. Someone who cares. Could fit, right? Someone who cares about finding a job will start preparing early. That makes sense. D, financial, so related to money. A financial person begins preparing. It doesn't really fit. So the answer is C. Let's continue. A successful applicant prepares a that highlights his education and experience and clearly states his employment. OK, so the third one is something that highlights education and experience. So I think we know what this is, right? It's probably a resume. Do we have resume in the options? Yes, D, resume. Uh, the other three options, aspect, no, very vague, no detail. Reward, prepares a reward, doesn't make sense. Reference, prepares a reference. Well, you do have to prepare a reference, but the reference does not highlight education and experience. So the best answer is D, resume. Number four, clearly states his employment. OK, let's look at the options. A, objective, employment objective, what kind of job you want. That makes sense. B, employment reference. Uh, well, you do need a clear employment reference. Let's uh, keep that one for now. C, asset, your employment asset. Doesn't make sense. D, resume. Also doesn't make sense. This is part of your resume. Your resume can't be part of your resume. So it's either objective or reference. Well, here it says clearly states. It has to be very clear. Uh, so objective and reference. Which one needs to be clear the most? I think it should be objective. 
even if your reference is not very clear, as long as there's a way to contact that person, it should be OK. But the objective should be clear. So your answer is A. Let's continue. Another important aspect is the applicants. OK, let's see what options we have. A institution. Uh, in, this is uh, an organization. Uh, in Chinese, we call this zi, or zi uh, Another important aspect is the applicant's institution. Well, if you're looking for a job, you may not have an institution. You may be living at home. So this is not the best answer. B, interdependence. Remember this? It means you rely on other people. Um, everybody relies on other people, but it's usually not something that we emphasize when you're looking for a job. So not B. C, clients. An applicant's clients. If you're looking for a job, you also may not have clients. If you're looking for your second job, then maybe you have clients, but this is also not a good answer. D, references. Well, yes, every job applicant needs references. So your answer is D. Let's continue. Even if you don't have any practical experience, a letter from a professor can tell the potential employer that you are knowledgeable and have a in the subject area. So number six, some kind of verb. A, enhancing a letter from a professor. Remember to enhance means to make better, so doesn't you should not enhance any letter. All right, that's a bad thing. If somebody writes a letter for you, don't change it. So not a B in closing. In closing a letter that, that can make sense. Let's look at the other two. C enrolling a letter doesn't make sense. D exchanging a letter doesn't make sense. Your professor would give you a letter, but you don't have to give a letter to your professor. So the answer is B, enclosing a letter, putting a letter in the same envelope. Number seven, uh, so the letter tells the employer that you are knowledgeable and have a in the subject area. A reference. You have a reference. Well, yes, because your professor wrote their letter, so your professor is your reference. That could make sense. B portfolio. A portfolio is a collection of your work. Uh, and the letter may not mention your portfolio, so this doesn't make sense. C, remainder. A remainder is what remains. Uh, so it, the letter tells the employer you have a remainder in the subject. Doesn't make sense. D, solid foundation. The letter tells them you have a solid foundation in the subject area. That makes sense. Um, so we have two options, A, reference, and D, solid foundation. Well, it says here in the subject area. So it's not just the field, it's also the subject. Subject usually means a kind of knowledge. So a reference is a person, 
a solid foundation is more related to knowledge. So this answer should be D. D is the better answer. You could say that you have a reference in the field or a reference in the area, but you wouldn't say you have a reference in the subject. That doesn't make sense. Let's continue. Unfortunately, only one person can the job. So we need a word that means something like get. A, tolerate. Rongren, not true. B, be awarded. This means to be given. Somebody gives you the job. Could be. C, target. Here as a verb, it means aim for or look for. Only one person can look for the job. Doesn't make sense. D, invest. To invest the job doesn't make sense. So your answer is B, be awarded, to be given. The successful applicant is the person who himself as a valuable to the company. I think at this point, we know the answer to these two. Number nine should be promotes and number 10 should be asset. Let's see if there are better choices. Number nine, tolerates. No. Gains. No, he's trying to share about himself, not to get anything. And then D encloses. No. So number nine answer is C. Number 10, a valuable client. No, he wants to work there, not to be a customer. B, firm. No, firm just means company. So a valuable company to the company. Doesn't make sense. C, objective. No, the objective is what he wants, not what he is. So the best answer is D, asset. OK, do you have questions about these? OK, uh, next we have two tips for writing. Uh, English writing I mentioned in week two. It focuses on being clear and being straightforward. So here are the two tips. One is clarity, which means to be very clear. And here that means to use details. So if you look at A and B, a, the Philippines has a lot of islands. B, the Philippines consists of 7,074 islands. B has more detail, so B is the better sentence. To be clear about what you're talking about, you have to use detail. The other tip is concreteness. Uh, this is related to details. Give more information, give clear information. So on page 31, we have two sentences. A, many people in mainland China live in poverty. Poverty means to be poor. B, many Chinese live in poverty, particularly in rural regions. So in the country, in the countryside. For example, an average farming household in Hunan province earns about US $3,600 a year in 1998. That's less than what many top business leaders in Shanghai make per month. So B is the better sentence because it gives you concrete information. A says there are many poor people. OK, we get it, but B lets you feel what that means. 
what does it mean to have many people who are poor? It puts you in that situation. It's more concrete. A is more abstract. So B is the better sentence. Do you have questions about this? OK, let's do an exercise. Uh, find all of the mistakes in this letter. I should warn you, this is not easy. If you have ever tried to find mistakes in your own English writing, you will know that this is not easy. Um, I'll give you 10 minutes. Find all of the mistakes. And if you can, try to think of the correct way to say this. If you can't think of the correct way, it's fine, but you have to see that something is wrong. 10 minutes.
do you want a hint? 要提示吗 ？So, um, there is in this line. My name. There are one, two, three mistakes. In the next line, summer. There are one, two, three. There are also three mistakes. In the next line, great training. There are one, two, three, four mistakes. In uh, item one, there are one, two mistakes. Item two, there are two mistakes. Item three, there are one, two, three mistakes. Three more minutes. OK, let's see if you found most of the mistakes. Dear sir, madam. Uh, this line is OK, no mistakes. Um, but I mentioned earlier that in the US, instead of madam, we would say ma'am. Uh, you can see at the bottom of your screen, ma'am is just madam, but without the D. 
，用撇号把第一省略掉。Line two, my name is. 没有动词 My name is Chris Y H Fang. Uh, and by the way, Chris with a K is a woman. Chris with a C H is a man. Chris with a K is a woman. Usually. And I will graduate. No D. Graduate. From Ming Chuan University in Taipei, in a city in Taipei, next summer. I hope, not myself, I hope I have a, the chance or a chance, both are, I guess both are fine. I have a chance or I have the chance to work with you, not working, to work with you. I heard that HG company has a great training program, not programming, program. So I need to get some information. You cannot count information information about applying ing applying for a job you cannot count work so if you want to count it it has to be a job or you can also say applying for work and don't uh, count work. Uh, just a small reminder, every preposition is followed by a noun, except for two. 英文介系词只有two后面不一定接名词, So you can't say apply, you have to say applying, 动名词. One, do I need to take the TOEFL? If we can say this as a word, then it has to have. Oh, no, it's a test. It's a it's the name of a test, so it's to take the TOEFL test. You don't have to say test, but you still have to say the. Take the TOEFL or any other tests. Furthermore, should I get a high score? It doesn't make sense to say higher because there's nothing to compare. And also, this should come before score. So should I get a higher score? Only one score. You take one exam, you get one score. Item two, is there a dormitory? You can count dormitories. So is there a dormitory? And it's M-I-T-O-R-Y, not M-A, dormitory. In the company or will I have to live at home? Item three, how much is the salary per month? Salary is a kind of money, and you cannot count money. So you cannot say many. You have to say much. How much is the salary per month? The next mistake is this should be a new paragraph. This is not part of item three. Thank you very much for any information. Any information. Anyone is a person. Any information you can provide. 
Best regards, Chris Y.H. Fung. OK, do you have questions? So uh, Chris wrote this email and she got a reply. Dear Miss Fung, regarding your message of November 13th, 2000. So regarding means about. Please note that you will need to take the TECPT. Right, so there's this the here. Okay. The TECPT. Taiwan English Comprehension Lijie, Proficiency Nanli Test. I don't think this exists. This is just for this example. And score a minimum of 800. So the word score as a verb means to get a score of a minimum of 800. So at least 800. Minimum means the least. The opposite, the most, is maximum. So you will sometimes see max and min, and that just means the most and the least. It would be to your advantage to continue to study and improve your English. Uh, so this means to continue to study and improve your English would give you an advantage. It would be to your advantage means it would give you an advantage. Please be advised that, which means pay attention. Dormitory accommodations are available. Accommodations, I think we talked about this, is somewhere to sleep. So dormitory accommodations, you can sleep in a dormitory, are available. We will discuss your salary at a later time. Please advise us, so please tell us, one, when you would like to apply, Two, which department you are interested in? So in a company, uh, each part of the company is called a department or sometimes a section. And three, why should we choose you to work at our company instead of other applicants? This is not right. It should be why we should, right? When you would, why we should is the correct grammar. Because it's part of the sentence. It's not asking a question. It's saying, please tell us the answer to this question. So it may have Best regards, Adam S. Apple, assistant, personnel department. Personnel department is the department in charge of people. Uh, today we call this human resources, HR, 人资部. Uh, one more thing to pay attention to. Please be advised usually means that this information is negative. It's uh, you cannot do something. You have to follow some kind of rule. Uh, so here, this is not exactly a good use of this phrase. Dormitory accommodations are available is a good thing. So I would not say, please be advised. I would say something like. We are pleased to inform you. Or. Uh, yeah, we are pleased to inform you. So we are happy to tell you. Because it's good news. Questions? OK, optional homework. If you want to practice writing a reply to this email, you can write an email and send it to me, and I will correct it for you. Uh, but you don't have to if you don't want to. And if you want to practice writing an email, you can look at page 32. 
here are some things that you can say in the email. Okay, 